I don't care what kind of hellfire you think you face in the afterlife, Will insisted to himself. All you ever will know is now, and sometime after you were born, before you die. He had a margarita with Helen at Sukasa, bought her a sombrero that came with the largest margarita in the house. She was quiet. She was tired of trying, and he tired of her trying. She wanted the whole story. He didn't tell her half. Telling stories was not a good way to forget them. He wanted to remember or preserve the memories in the written word, which he did. The way he had lived with Bella, he could never live again, not through the most vivid of recollections, the most telling of dreams. Helen, she cared deeply for him. She cared deeply for anyone so close to her. It looks bad, she thought. He's done poorly in this trial. She believed every word he spoke to her, every detail he described. His honesty was evident. She knew the doubt the cops, the lawyers, Bella's family shadowed him with were hard for him to bear. But it was the loss that crushed him. He was only in his 20s only so grounded. Youth can be a wonderful time, full of energy. But that adrenaline that's your best friend is your worst enemy. Old folks have fixed their principles to ground themselves in the wax that is the world, molding and melting, while youth remains immersed in struggle against society, against passion, against better judgment, Will, she efforted, you realize what has happened? Well, it's not your fault. When you say that, it resonates with me, but the guilt returns. I cannot help myself, he replied. I'm caught. I do not twist nor turn to escape the hell I've created for myself. I'm the everyman today and maybe tomorrow, damn. To top it off, I was born too late. The normal American says, what happened? You say, what is past? Closer to the French. You know how I say it? In a tongue that reeks of Latin. What has transpired? How can I live a long life when my words are dead? I feel so common, he told Helen, pounding his fist down in the bar, stuck in the mud, not able to move on. I thought I'd never be so fucking common. You're not common. You will never be common. Besides, she said, common people don't fuck with their minds this way. Okay, so I'm not common. Where does that leave me? Simply fucked up. Book two, chapter two. The couch shook beneath him this night. The floor shook because a van hit a utility pole in his alley, then caught fire. The horn laid on heavy and endless, stirred him from the couch, and he walked barefoot on the wood floors to his bedroom window and saw it about 30 feet down and away, saw flames rise orange in its interior, heard the siren of the engine someone called. The driver of the van was nowhere to be seen. Probably another drive-by. Set a fire to kill a trail. He heard it in the distance and watched the fire truck pull up, lights rotating, and saw the Union men take an axe to the windshield. Then an unwound hose filled and blasted the orange light, and the van was left there, dead in the dark, abandoned, the democratic way. The orange ocean of light of the city consumed the incendiary van and sky burn. Black smoke rose and dissipated.